Welcome to Transformative Principle, where you learn how to be a leader and not just a manager of a to-do list. I am your host, Jethro Jones. You can find me on Twitter at Jethro Jones. Your to-do list is a hungry monster that is never satisfied. For the last year and a half, I've helped principals get awards, get promoted, and find the time to do the work that really matters. I recently opened a new mastermind slot. Schedule a call with me and let's overcome the stressed and isolated principal position together. Go to the show notes for this episode at transformativeprincipal.org and click schedule a call with Jethro. Welcome to Transformative Principal. I am excited today because today I'm doing something a little bit different. Last year, was last year, maybe the year before, I met Sarah Johnson at a principal's conference and I was really impressed with her and thought that what she was talking about was really great. She's the author of Balance Like a Pirate, and she co-wrote that with Jessica Cabin and Jessica Johnson. And I like that book. I think it's great. And I think that you would like it also. But Sarah has uh, since gone out and started doing some educational consulting. And she also started a podcast that is totally focused on inspiring women to be amazing. And women are already amazing. And sometimes they don't think that. And the women in my life who have been so amazing to me has been just a blessing. And I would not be who I am without the women in my life, especially my mom, who has had so much patience with me. And she doesn't ever listen to this, so she won't hear it. But (laughs) she is really an amazing mom that I am very grateful to have in my life. I've had amazing sisters who have helped me out in many ways. And I have also had my wife and my daughters and women that I've worked with. Being in education, obviously, I work with a lot of women and just feel really grateful to have them in my life. So anyway, I asked Sarah if she would do a special jolt episode for this podcast so that I could share it with you and help you know about her podcast, which you can find at In Awe to Rise, in A-W-E, in awe to rise.com. So go and check that out. And there are links, of course, to her information in the show notes at transformativeprincipal.org slash episode 305. And with that, we will get on to what Sarah has to say about gratitude today. Hello, my friends. At recording of this episode, we are in the month of November. And on the Ina podcast, we are featuring our stories with a series on gratitude. During this time of year in the United States, we often see a lot of messaging about gratitude with the upcoming holiday season and World Kindness Day falls in this month, prompting local and global focus in this area. Depending upon your lens, it would be really easy to take these saturated messages for granted, reducing the concept of gratitude to another hashtag, scroll on by, or possibly think there's only one time of year when it's most appropriate to infuse practices of gratitude into your world. I wanted to speak today on the transformative power of gratitude so that we can take a few minutes to take a deeper dive into what might be behind the focus on gratitude. The truth is that gratitude and the deploying of it have the power to literally change your own world the landscape of those around you, and to shift cultures. I've come to see and believe that practicing gratitude can literally be a superpower. And regardless of where we are in the world, we can cultivate that power and prompt deep transformation in our personal and professional lives. For those listeners who want tangible, meaty information about the power of gratitude, I have linked some resources to read, and I'm taking pieces of brilliance from well-known experts about this topic to align stories from real life with their research in this episode. Before I dive into this topic, I want to be sure to acknowledge that listeners are dealing with heavy stuff, and I deal with heavy issues. Focusing on gratitude is not meant to dismiss our challenges and make our complex lives airy, light, ignoring the challenges we face and flicking them off our shoulders as if they can't impact our mental well-being and those around us. Rather, I want to passionately impress upon all listeners that engaging with the transformative power of practicing gratitude can help rise both ourselves and others out of the pits that we all encounter in life. And let me emphasize well this point too. We will most definitely be carrying pain with us throughout our entire lives. Hurt that seems so heavy that nothing can relieve us from the weight. My heart has constant potential to be weighted down But I have learned throughout life and from incredible other stories of resilience that we can hold pain and promise simultaneously. The key is how we carry that load. This Jolt episode will not give you every answer, 
but allow the concept to land where it needs to in the hearts of the friends listening. And, and I encourage you to reach into the resources to assist you with whatever load you're bearing and know that you are not alone. One core takeaway on gratitude is that the practice of it transforms the mind and strengthens our core. I find it so fascinating and deeply empowering to know that we have the ability to work our brains like a muscle to become stronger in mind, body, and soul. One of the greatest lessons that I've learned over the course of life is that we cannot be our best versions of leaders in any space if we're not first willing to work on ourselves. Think about it. How many times in your own lives have you been told to do something, whatever it, that might be, by somebody who has not done that work first? It's hard to buy into anything when someone is operating under the do as I say, not as I do mentality. So the first step to begin practicing gratitude is do it in your own world. I love the quote that Brene Brown often shares and this idea from a Jesuit priest. It's not joy that makes us grateful. It's gratitude that makes us joyful. If you are someone who struggles and doesn't consider yourself joyful, consider disciplining yourself to focus on what you do have, even the most simple of things as often as possible. And I bet you will see the power of transformation in your own life to a more joyful person. Focusing our single processor brain on what we are grateful for in our world increases our happiness, according to research studies from people like Dr. Martin Seligman. One of his studies found the very act of writing a letter of gratitude to someone from your past has the power to increase happiness and has a lasting effect for up to a month. When you take time to process and write down what you are personally thankful for, whether you ever share that with another person or not, studies like Seligman's show our mental well-being increases, which accounts for a recommendation from several experts in the field of positive psychology to engage with gratitude journals. For a practical example of this in my own life, I'll share that during a particularly rough period, and honestly, without even knowing about the research, I began listing the grateful things that I had going on in life. I just been feeling really buried with the burdens of stress and feeling uncomfortable with the pressures and focusing on what I did have alleviated the pressures mounting in my chest in a way that nothing else had. One day I'd been traveling to work and my car broke down. And to understand the impact, you should know I was literally in the middle of nowhere because I live in a remote area to start. And the route to my school was all back roads with not even as much as a gas station between destinations. Life was a bit stressful in those days with two children under five years old early mornings, late nights, and little time to even think in between. My solution to the breakdown of the car was to contact the bus garage and hitch a ride to school. Now I could have cursed this situation, been frustrated by all the implications of having a broken down vehicle and the issues that came with trying to solve that problem. My day could have been completely broken. And as a leader, I could have toxified those around me. Instead, because I sat in gratitude in the silence before the bus came to pick me up, I made an intentional list of what I was grateful for in this situation. And I actually wrote it down on the grocery receipt in my purse. I wrote the following. I was grateful for the fact that I had a cell phone reception to call the bus company, that I had built a relationship with the privately owned company and the bus drivers so that they would pick me up, that we had the financial resources for a tow and a fix with an hour in my schedule today to call for help. I'd always wanted to ride the bus route and this would give me time to do it. I was grateful that I had a job worthy to want to persevere to get to and a home worthy to want to get back to. And finally, I wrote that my legs were not broken and that if I didn't get picked up, I could walk. But I'll tell you, it was 10 miles. So that would have been an interesting story for another podcast. But friends, because I sat in silence, taking the time to strengthen myself, when the bus pulled up, I had my thumb out ready to hitchhike. And I walked onto that bus with a smile and a big thank you to the bus driver, the teacher's aide that was there, and the students. I smiled and laughed at the situation the whole way to school. Because this was a small town and news travels fast, everyone knew about the principal needing to hitch a ride by the bus by the time I got there. And one of my teachers had already called to arrange a tow from the local garage so it could be looked at. And at first I was pretty uncomfortable with the level of assumption on that person's part. But as the morning went on and my day kind of got taken away, I became busy. I couldn't even call for a follow-up until noon with that garage. And I was so thankful for that person. The vehicle was picked up and fixed by the end of the day. And I was grateful for every little step along the way and the kindness shown. And one example like this could be so easily swept away. And it was six years ago, but the impact of what rippled from there still remains a memory that makes my chest well up a bit. Now we have the choice to focus our brains on what we could easily take for granted. And our default mode can get the best of us sometimes, especially in stressful situation. Let's train our default mode to focus on what we do have. And we will definitely see more 
than less, regardless of what our current circumstances are. And this month, I have Elizabeth Bostwick on the podcast, and she shares a powerful example of her much-loved family pet passing that very week and how she was obviously so sad. The last thing she wanted to do was think about what she had in life and lose herself to the sadness, honestly. Instead, she sat down and forced herself to start writing down what she was grateful for in the week because she had that practice of intentional focus on gratitude in her life. She shared her very real example of the boost she received from disciplining herself to focus on what she had to be grateful for, admitted that though the gratitude didn't take away the pain from her loss completely away, her mental well-being increased from focusing on the joy she did have, and this allowed her to continue to be strong and move forward through the pain for her family. Elizabeth's message is a perfect illustration of holding pain and promise. I've linked articles with myriad ideas, but some very simple practices are making intentional focus space to write down and speak out loud the things in your life for which you're grateful so that you can engage with them and work to cultivate this practice in your own lives to help transform your own mind. It's a powerful practice with simple steps that literally anybody can do. The best part about cultivating your own gratitude is that once you begin practicing gratitude to transform your mind, there's power that is already teed up to work in the environment around you, but you must start with yourself. A second powerful point is that deploying gratitude has the power to boost others. When I'm working with individuals in workshops and sessions, I emphasize the power of deploying gratitude further from your own space to others around you. Not only does speaking life to the pieces for which we are grateful that we do have, have an impact on our own well-being, I have seen how it has this beautiful cyclical impact on our own lives. And we feel good when we acknowledge what is good in our lives. When we express it to others with appreciation, we boost them and they have the power to boost others. One hot off the press example came from a session I did literally yesterday and I could not believe how powerful it was. I gave participants a charge and time to engage in options to either write down their gratitude, write a note to deliver, or to send a text message. One participant came up to me at the end of the keynote, very emotional, stating that she had sent a message to her daughter. Not only did her daughter respond with deep joy, but she posted that message on her social media and shared that gratitude with her networks, who were also then boosted by the joy and gratitude and inspired. The person next to her when she was sharing burst with joy because she was aware of the challenges that that mom had faced in teen years with this daughter. And they both expressed such joy in the simple act. And, you know, some people could look at that example as nothing. It's just another social media post, but it wasn't for that woman, her daughter, their friends. We talked in a session later and me sharing her example inspired others to share their experiences and the boost in the room was palpable. We don't have to live in deficit thinking, friends. We can be grateful and share our gratitude, thereby amplifying our joy and those around us. In this month feature series on the In Awe podcast, we heard from Lisa Nigati who shares her experience of transforming her mindset when her father was passing. Though she was devastated that he was dying, she shared how the experience transformed her heart and mind to focus on the fact that she was grateful to be there with him, make memories, care for him, and that her husband could take care of their home while she was away. Her message is incredibly inspiring. And the power of her story has hit countless listeners. And just by sharing her own practices of gratitude, she has inspired several listeners who continue to connect with me and um, share how the impact of their own lives has been Uh, more joyful because of the promise and the pain of her story as well. A final note about the transformative power of practicing gratitude is that we can impact cultures. There's so much to be said about leveraging the power of gratitude to transform our workspaces. The backbone of this information comes from Sean Acker, whose work is centered around positive psychology in the workplace. And in his book, The Happiness Advantage, he shares the impact on productivity and culture in the workplace by leaders to intentionally infuse methods for boosting mental health and well-being. And it's not a surprise that he focuses much of the research across the board on gratitude. In my own leadership, I used this superpower with great intention. And I want to share with you just one example that you can take today and start using. At the start of the 2016-17 school year, we had been struggling with climate and I made it my mission to boost the happiness and joy in the environment around us in the school. One of the ways I did this was to provide all staff members with a focus session about the backbone behind this sharing Acker's work and then providing them with a box to collect the messages of gratitude from students, parents, and other people in, in even their own notes. The idea stems from the It's Worth It box and I link that here for you in the show notes. I wrote a handwritten and authentic note for each staff member to start them out. And then I set goals to intentionally do that each quarter for the year for each staff member. I then created a system where they could do the same for one another 
for their students. And we set an intention for them to send notes to parents. I can tell you that our environment began to transform. We were smiling more, coming together more, more apt to express gratitude to one another, more able to smile and ease back into the work that needed so much of our attention. And for me, the power in my intentional focus came in a powerful conversation. I had this very week with a former staff member. This person and I had shared connection that year that was surprising and meaningful. And then I am no longer working there. The mutual respect and love remains. Had I not led with intentional gratitude, I can say cultural restoration periods like the one we entered and the conversations like the one I had this very week would not have been possible, nor would the growth and the positivity that year been possible had I not led with that. Some leaders will see writing notes or giving staff members time during meetings to write notes as fluffy, but I can tell you that Acker's research, emerging and important work around emotional intelligence for leaders and its impact on the workspaces and my own experiences should be enough to jolt you to consider infusing practices into your own workspace. And I want to end by noting that the practice of gratitude can become a natural part of your life when you engage in the discipline focus on it. Trelane Clark, who was featured in this month, speaks to where gratitude flows right through her mouth without even thinking. She has a long history of practicing gratitude and her story impresses upon me just how powerful that practice can be. Trelane shares her story and her experience with breaking out of domestic violence and her story on gratitude for how she is rising in her own life and for her children is exceptionally awe-inspiring. I love the concept that anything worth having does not come easy. So I challenge you to see how practicing gratitude as a one-off could be easy, but disciplining yourself to go beyond an attitude of gratitude and cultivate practices of gratitude and deploying gratitude both in your world and growing it in others is absolutely hard, but it is so worth having. You too can be more joyful through the practice of gratitude and exercising your brain, making gratitude and the ability to lead transformation through it, your superpower. Check out the incredible stories featured for the month of November on the In Awe podcast for more inspiration, friends, and be sure to share them. What a simple way to boost the mission in their message and lead in your own life through that ripple effect.